it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. The Magic Show from Hell by Victoria Holland. Jasper's POV. The clock ticked back and forth above me. It was late in the morning, and I fell asleep on my bed watching mindless late-night cartoons, leaving the TV on in the process. The loud sounds from the morning show stirred me awake with sounds of explosions and crazy hijinks. I suddenly found myself looking at the clock. It was nine in the morning and I already knew that our parents weren't home. My mum was working and my dad was out helping a friend move. Thanks to my luck, my dad didn't even ask me to help, which was a good thing for me. Tired from last night's channel surfing, I was hoping for at least one good scary movie or TV show to pop up. But all I found were bland, boring infomercials. I sat in bed for a few minutes, allowing myself to wake up fully before starting a new day. The grating noise of the clock was the only sound that lofted in my room. I gazed around at my room until my eyes hit my bookcase, filled with chilling stories that I've read many times and now grew bored on. Slowly I got out of bed and walked towards the bookcase, pulling out one of my books. My eyes glazed down at it as I opened it and flipped through the pages. I sighed, placing the book back, knowing what happens in the story. Ghost haunts, two girls escape by defeating the ghoul by exercising it from her home. Same cliché story, same ending. All of the books or movies I watched either had the hero or heroine escape and have their happy ending. It was always predictable and quite sad in all honesty. One of the reasons why I strive to find new ways to get a good scare. A new horrifying twist would be most pleasing to experience, but nowadays people repeat the same formula never taking a chance to go beyond that endless cycle of horror. I broke out from my pondering and then proceeded towards the door to depart from my room. I guess I can make some macaroni and cheese, I thought, making my way into the kitchen. Now I just have to find the box. I opened a cabinet filled with canned fruit and other foods inside, full of boxes like spaghetti, noodles and such. I slowly leaned in, digging through them. Where is it? I growled. That's when I saw a hand reach in, grabbing a box that was right next to me. I mentally slapped myself and looked to my left to see my little sister, Rose. She shook the box in my face. You're as blind as a bat, aren't you, Jasper? I huffed, grabbing the box from her hands, sitting it on the counter. When did you come downstairs? I asked. She watched me. What happened in the living room? She told me. Hmm? Watching television? I asked. She nodded. Yeah, Spongebob was on, Rose told me. Nodding, I lazily responded. All right, since you're here, can't you help me? I asked. With what? With the eggs. I'm taught you how to make them right. Yeah, she did, but I kind of forgot, she told me with a frown. All right, I'll help you. Get a pan, please, I instructed. She started to search. Here you go, Jasper. Thanks, I told her. Now, crack them, I continued. What if I mess up? I did once with Mom and got the yolk all over. No, you won't, I promise, I assured her. She looked at them nervously, cracking one egg against the table. <laughs> told you, I said. I looked at the box on the side. Okay, stir until soft, I read, stirring clockwise. I've had a tug on my shirt. Rose pointed towards the stove. All right, and then you... I started, just to hear my phone's ringtone cut me off. I sighed, looking over at the macaroni again, and towards my phone. One second, stir the macaroni for me, please. I frowned. Is it Mary? She asked. Yeah, most likely. Okay, but you'll keep an eye out for the eggs, right? She asked. I nodded, going towards my phone. I looked at the caller ID. Yep, it's Mary, I replied, answering it. I waited for a few seconds to hear rustling in the background of her phone. Mary? I asked. Jasper! The teen shouted back. I pulled the phone away from my face a bit. 
and her voice was ear-shattering. Whoa, excited much? I laughed a bit. Laughter came out of Mary's mouth, too. I found something really freaking cool online, she continued. My eyes lit up with interest. Really? If it's that story about the ghost, I've already... I started, just to be cut off. No, it's not a dumb story. I actually read up on our state. It's in an article, she told me. I felt my interest float away and I flipped the eggs again. You have to be kidding. What article did you find? The one where the farmer got his leg cut off by his farming equipment? I asked. No, Jasper, I swear. This is actually interesting, she shouted, getting aggravated, wanting to tell me. I stopped for a second. All right, but I bet I've read it before. I replied, looking at Rose, who stared, her eyes filled with curiosity. I heard Mary let out an annoyed groan. Great, now I can't. Mum's asking me to tend to the garden and stuff. She mumbled harshly. Oh, tell me later, okay? I'm gonna have to. Be sure to have your laptop out. All right, all right, bye. I finished. I heard her mum shouting for her from her end, and she groaned again. Okay, bye she told me, hanging up. I moved the phone away from my ear, placing it in my pocket. Rose started to stir the macaroni again. I looked into the pot, noticing the macaroni was soft. All right, good job, I told her. I lifted the pot, pouring the water out into the sink. What was she talking about, Jasper? Rose asked suddenly. I shrugged. Well, she didn't exactly get to the main point, I replied. Hearing Rose turn the oven off. Well, I'm sure it's interesting, she told me. I brought the pot back onto the stove, staying silent. Well, maybe, I responded. And we went silent for a few seconds. All right, get the cheese, I said, changing the subject. She grinned widely and couldn't help but feel somewhat curious in what Mary was going to say. It's been a long time since I actually heard her so hyped up about something. Maybe it was something I've never read before. Later, during the evening, I was back in my room, my phone next to me. I had my eyes glued towards the laptop screen, staring at the search bar. Finally, to my relief, the phone started to vibrate. My eyes snapped away from my laptop, and my hands quickly scrambled towards the device, answering the call. Hello? I asked. Some exhausted pants were audible, and it ended with the sounds of a door slamming. Merit? I started, just for her to interrupt. Yeah, sorry about not calling earlier. I sort of had to help Mum out with a few things, she told me. I heard rustling on her line, and she let out a tired groan. Oh, I'm so happy to be in my bed, she continued. I put her on speakerphone and placed the phone next to me. Yeah, I bet. Now, what did you want to show me? My curiosity spoke for me. There was a few seconds of a pause. I knew that you were interested, she laughed. I had to admit that it sounded as if I truly didn't care during the last call. Yeah, I am. Mainly because you've never sounded so hyped for something before, I responded. Well, duh. This is an awesome thing. All right, search up West Virginia abandoned places, she told me. My fingers immediately went towards the keys, typing it all in quickly. Did you type it in? she asked. Yeah. Yeah. Now, which link? I asked, seeing multiple ones to choose from. The first one, she replied, her voice filled with excitement. I brought the mouse towards the link, clicking on it. Soon enough, I was brought to a website. It had a bland red and grey background with text, even pictures, some of a little boy with an older man. What is this? I asked Mary. I heard her clicking as if getting on the website herself. This is Papa Grande's magic show. I started to scroll down to view some of the text under each picture. I stopped at the first picture, the one of the building. It had a large sign next to it and people were walking inside. Each of them had old hairstyles and happy expressions. Grande's magic show. Yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. Now, go ahead and read the text, she told me. I blinked and started to read. Papa Grande's Magic Show, 1964, Main Road, West Virginia. 
This was the building in which the events took place. The building was decorated with beautiful red curtains, wooden flooring, each board polished to shine brightly with cement underneath. Wonderful grey walls painted with vibrant red circles. The building was huge, like a giant hotel with a large decorated stage for the magician himself in the upstairs area. I read out loud. Hmm, that was back in 1964, I said, rubbing my chin. I heard a hum from Mary. <laughs> exactly. Hmm, this is interesting, I replied, scrolling down towards the next picture of the child and the older man. Grande and his boss Louis. 1965. Grande, age 12, was very talented at magic for his age and was hired by Louis in 1963 and was given the alias Papa Grande as a stage name. Grande was a rather tempered child who normally stuck next to Louis until 1993 when he passed away. The new boss was hired later on. I have to laugh at the nickname though, she snorted. I tapped my fingers on my laptop. Yeah, but Still, what's your point? I asked her. Just read on, okay? The next picture should give you a hint, she replied. I tilted an eyebrow, scrolling down to find a picture of people running out, fear ridden on their faces as they ran out of the doors. 1993, Grande's last magic show. People ran in fear of the events which happened inside. This picture was captured during the event. The building is now fenced in. Exactly. This is what I'm talking about. The building is able to be explored, she told me. I just stared in thought. Oh, Jasper? Oh, yeah, sorry. I was just thinking. How did you find this? I asked. Like I said, I was searching up a band of things that was in this state, so well, I sort of dug into the old links and found the link to this website. Now, are you going to thank me? Thank you for what? Finding something for us to do, she replied. I stopped. She said I wanted to do this. Sure, it's interesting, but... Jasper, you're so lazy. Main road's a good ten-minute walk. Are you scared? She teased. I thought for a moment. <sighs> Fine. What time? I asked. She let out a cheer of victory. <laughs> Two o'clock tomorrow. I'll be at your house then, she told me. I picked up my phone. Ah, see you then. Bye, she said, hanging up. I moved my phone away from my ear and hung up, placing it on my desk. Hmm. I went silent, looking at the last picture on the website. I closed the lid of my laptop. Well, I did feel rather curious. Seconds later, I heard a car door slam and Rose ran out of her room, going down the stairs. Mom must be home. Slowly got up from my bed, making my way out of my room. Downstairs, I heard my mom yawn loudly, closing the front door. Mom! Rose shouted cheerfully. I walked down the stairs and saw her. She removed her jacket and placed it on a chair. Hey, sweetie, she grinned, messing up her hair. She looked slightly dark under the eyes, most likely tired. Man, you're home late, I said, walking up to her. And she nodded. Yeah, the office made me work a little later than normal, she replied. Uh, I see, I said. She reached into her purse, pulling out her phone. Uh, speaking of later than normal, your father texted me saying he'll be home about six tomorrow. Still has a ton of things to do over there. In the meantime... What have you both been doing? She asked, walking into the nearby bathroom. I pulled out a kitchen chair and sat down. Rose was by the door. Oh, we made some macaroni and cheese. Then I just watched cartoons for a while. And I decided to go upstairs to my room, Rose told her. Oh, is that all you ate? Mom replied. I leaned on my arm, bored. No, I've been snacking. Jasper ate a few small things, but nothing big, because he was talking to Mary and was doing chores, Rose said. Oh, and who were you and Mary talking about, Jasper? She asked. I started to tap my fingers on the table. Well, she's coming over tomorrow and stuff. We talked about abandoned places and such. Yeah, the usual, I responded. She is? What time? 
about to. We're going to go to a few places, and then we're coming back home. Ah, uh, I see. Well, take Rose with you. I just don't feel as if she's safe alone, she told me. And I froze. Oh, wait, what, what? Take Rose with me, I shouted. And Rose frowned a bit. Is there a problem with it, Jasper? She asked. Yeah, I thought tomorrow was your day off. It's only supposed to be Mary and I, I responded. The bathroom door opened and Mum walked out, her face clear of makeup. Well, I have to work tomorrow because someone else is sick, so I have to take her place for the day, she replied. Rose crossed her arms. Mum, I... No, Jasper, don't argue. Take her with you. Oh. Fine, I said in defeat. My mom was rather paranoid with my little sister. She can't be anywhere alone, and it made me feel like the babysitter. Oh, before I knew it, it was eleven. I was once again in my bed, reading through the same website once more, trying to find out more information. Oh, I don't want to find out more about him. I bit my lip, clicking on more images. And of course, dozens popped up. One of Grande back in 1965. From the looks of it, he cut an actress in half. But of course, when it comes to magic, the actresses and actors always had a way to be safe during it all. I clicked on another picture. It was an old map of the building's location. It had Main Road going around it. Hmm, okay, so it's by Main Road at least, but in that exact location now, it's nothing but a forest. Oh, I wonder if it's still standing. I rubbed my chin, reaching over to grab my phone. I went to my text and started to message Mary. Hey, Mary, don't you even know if it's still standing? I sent. While I waited, I continued to click picture after picture until I stopped, seeing an image of Grande back in the 90s. Unlike most of the pictures of him as a kid, in this picture he just looked depressed, like all that happiness had just vanished. I heard my phone vibrate, and I looked at the message. Yeah, it's still standing, but I bet it's damaged. Hey, you ready for tomorrow? Mary's message said. I started to message back. Oh, I just saw an old map of the location. Surrounded by the forest now. Oh, by the way, Rose is going with us. Yeah, be ready for a small hike through a forest. What? Hey, why? Why is she coming along? I mean... Not a big deal, but still. I know. My mom's forcing me. She's too worried about leaving her alone. All right, I understand. I'll see you then. Heading to bed. Good night. Good night. I finished texting her, placing my phone back onto my desk. I pushed the power button on my laptop, shutting it off. My eyelids started to droop, and everything eventually became black. The next day pretty much consisted of making breakfast, doing the chores I needed to do, and finally, I went into my room and grabbed everything I possibly needed. I gently placed things I might need into my backpack. Alright, something to snack on. Some water and a flashlight. This should be good. I checked over everything I had. Now we just have to wait for Mary. I huffed, getting out from my position. I bent over to grab my phone, sliding it into my pocket. Silently, I made my way out of my room, sliding the bag over one of my shoulders. Rose was downstairs. She grabbed her jacket and slipped it on. I walked towards her and pulled out my phone. Where are you? I texted, hoping Mary would reply first. I'm down the street, she replied seconds later. All right, we're ready and such. I also packed a bag for us as well. Great. Be there in a few minutes. Okay, I messaged. And I slipped my phone back into my pocket and looked at the door. Hey, Jasper, Rose said. What? I asked. Where are we going? She questioned. Oh, we're just going to go check out something. It'll be fun, I replied, tapping my foot impatiently. Hmm. She went silent. And eventually, Mary arrived. She knocked on the door and I allowed her inside. Okay, let's get out of here, she said quickly. I walked out of the house, Rose following behind, closing the door slowly. 
Okay, first off, what did you pack for us? Oh, some food, water, flashlights. Awesome. Sounds good. Now, aren't you excited? Well, I'm very curious. Close enough. How about you, Rose? Mary asked. Rose lifted an eyebrow. I don't even know where we're going, she replied. Mary gave me a look as we started to walk. Well, it's going to be cool. You like abandoned things, Rose? Rose shrugged and went into the middle of us. Kinda. Kinda? I mean, it's okay. I just don't like ghosts, and most abandoned places have ghosts, right? No, not exactly. But where we're going, we're only going to be there for an hour or so. Oh. We all pretty much talked until we arrived at Main Road. I looked at the tall trees that towered over us. Mary took a deep breath, taking a few steps into the brush of nature in front of her. Now, if I remember, we should keep going forward and we should run into a fence, Mary mumbled. And climb it? Rose asked. I nodded. Most likely, but who knows? It might actually be torn down from the elements or... Well, either way, we'll get in. Yeah, because I didn't walk all this way for nothing. Really? You're complaining about walking for ten minutes? Mary snickered. Well, I growled in annoyance, looking down. God, I wasn't complaining, I was just... Bye. Mary's voice sounded further away. I looked up just to see her walk deeper, deeper away, farther from me. Rose followed close behind her. And I raised my arms in the air. <sighs> what the heck? I shouted. And I heard her laugh. Come on, Jasper, she shouted. I groaned, stepping into the brush of weeds and other plant life, some of which reached up to my knees. I struggled to run in it, thanks to it being rather thick. Hey, thanks for not leaving me behind, I said sarcastically when I caught up to them. Well, you should have kept up with me, she said, laughing. What? I just looked down for a second. Still, you should have kept up, she teased. I felt a little annoyed. Minutes had passed. I groaned, bringing my hand up to my bag, taking it off of my shoulder slowly. Mary and Rose stopped after hearing me place it down on a rock. Water break? Rose asked. I nodded, taking the large container out. Hey, remember to save some for us. Mary frowned. I swallowed the little amount of water I had left in my mouth, closing the lid. I know, I told her, holding it out. She quickly grasped it in her fingers. So, how much further? I questioned. Mary wiped her mouth, handing the container towards Rose, looking around. We should be close by now. I felt a sort of cheer go throughout my body. I reached over, grabbing the container from Rose, who held it out. I gently placed it back in my bag, putting the bag back over my shoulder. Well, we have to keep moving, she said, starting to walk once again. And Rose looked at me. My legs are sore, Jasper, she told me. I started to walk once again. Yeah, I know how you feel. Well, you can tell that you're both siblings, she teased. I rolled my eyes, and soon enough, Mary stopped, and her eyes lit up. I tilted my head and looked at her. Um, Mary? Don't you see it? She asked. See what? I questioned. She pointed towards the front of us. I looked. To my happiness, there was the fence. Ah, we finally made it, she shouted, running towards the fence fast ignoring the multiple weeds around us. Rose and I looked at each other and started running ourselves. Then we were in front of the fence. The fence appeared to look like a bush. The plant life covered it like a blanket. From the looks of it, it looked rather complicated to climb. Mary walked up to it, observing everything. Then, Rose said, going up close. Mary put her hand on the vegetation. Yeah, this might be difficult. She told us. Yeah, so who's going first? I'll go last, I said, looking at them both. Mary looked at Rose. 
I think I should go first. And then Rose can go. All right. Be careful, I told her. She nodded and gripped the fence tight. Each time she started to climb, I expected her to lose her footing. I stayed behind her just in case she fell. God, it's harder to climb than I thought, she said, lifting her hand up to grab a hold of the vegetation and the fence underneath. Right, almost there, she shouted, moving her foot up into the plant life, trying to feel the fence through it. Jasper, I'm sort of scared to climb this, Rose whispered. I looked down at her and gave her an assuring smile. Hey, I'll be behind you to catch you if you fall. Mary will be on the other side, too. Rose sighed shakily, and I looked up to see Mary going down the other side of the fence. I heard her grunt as she dropped to the ground. All right, it's Rose's turn, Mary shouted from the other end. I looked over at Rose, who grew a tough posture. I can do this she said, starting to climb the fence slowly. I stayed behind her. I could hear her inhaling air deeply, trying to stay calm and balanced. She reached up to grasp the vegetation just for her foot to slip. She let out a scream of fear. I quickly caught her in my arms. She was shaking, terrified. Whoa, is she okay? Mary shouted from the other side, hearing the scream. I looked at her and rubbed her back. All right, breathe. It's okay. He almost made it. I tried to calm her down. Jasper, she started. Hey, is everything okay? Mary asked again. Yeah, everything's fine. She lost her grip, I replied. Is she okay? Yeah, well, it scared her though. All right, try to hurry. Look, you have to see this. I looked at her when she finally calmed down. You ready to try it again? I asked her. She looked down. Yeah, but can you help? She asked, and I nodded. Yeah, of course, I replied, picking her up with a grunt. I lifted her high so she could have less to climb. There, you have a good grip, right? I asked. She nodded, starting to climb up slower. I could feel a sense of relief when she finally went over the top going to the other end where Mary stood, waiting for her. Hey, did you make it? I asked. Yeah, your turn, Jasper. I raised my hands, clutching the fence tight, moving up slowly, one foot after another. I gripped the top, and soon enough, I made it over the old fence. My feet hit the solid ground, and I turned around. Rose and Mary were staring at a very large building. My eyes widened at its appearance. The paint that was on the outside was chipped immensely, revealing the brown bricks underneath. Vines, much like the fence, had taken over most of the building. The windows were boarded up, and the windows above, too high for us to get to, were busted out. Mary's grin widened along with my own. This was an amazing sight. Come on, we have to find a way inside, Mary said. Her voice cheery. I walked over and nodded. I'll go and check out the back. Jasper, Rose and yourself should check around the sides of the building, she instructed. I groaned. Who made you the leader? I asked. She pushed me gently. I'm the one that found out about this place, she said teasingly, and Rose giggled. Ah, fine. She grew a slight smirk. She started walking towards the back of the building. I looked down at Rose. Left or right side? Rose asked. I shrugged. Well, let's just check the left, I replied, going in that direction. As we went around the building, twigs snapped under our feet, and the breeze that once blew the trees had vanished, making everything a little quieter. I got close to the side of the building, looking at each window. I rose my hand up to a board on one, pushing it. I didn't even budge. If anything, it felt as if there were more boards on the other side of it. Rose walked over to the one next to it, getting the exact same thing. Well, they've got to be boarded up on the other side too, I told her. She nodded. Right side now? Rose asked. I agreed. Oh, I doubt it'll find anything different, though, I replied, 
going around the corner towards the back once again. I went towards the right side, and Rose followed quickly behind. Much like the left side, the windows were boarded up. I made my way slowly over to them, reaching up to push like how I did with the left, just to get the exact same response. I growled. Oh, my God. Please don't make this trip for nothing. I groaned, going towards the front, just to hear a noise, followed by a cheerful cry. Mary? I asked, going around the corner, just to see her climbing through a window. My eyes widened in shock, and I walked over. Here, how did you... It was loose, Mary replied. Loose, but all the others were... Just fine? Oh, well, boarded up from the other side too, I think. Oh, this one only had one side boarded, and it made it loose, she told me. What? Either way, we have a way in. She smiled, going inside. Rose climbed through next, and I climbed in last. My feet slowly touched the wooden flooring, and I looked around. The room that we were in had a bed. Its sheets were tattered, and the room was an ungodly mess. The floor had to have had layers of dust along with the objects inside. The walls were chipping much like the exterior of the building. Whoa, I said in awe. Mary squealed happily. This is so amazing, she said, going towards an old desk. I could feel my eyes travel over every object in the room. Slowly I walked towards the closet which was next to the bed. I tried my best to avoid the multiple objects that were strewn in my path, mainly the bed sheets, which could have easily tripped me up with one wrong step. Did you find something, Jasper? Rose asked, coming next to me. I slowly gripped the closet door, pulling it open slowly because it was old. Oh, maybe, I replied, opening it fully. Inside the closet were dusty old shoes, along with coat hangers and some old ruined shirts at the very bottom. Hey, Mary, come and look at this, I said. She turned around and placed a small vase back onto the desk and walked over. This is cool, she said, picking up an old shirt from the bottom. Suddenly my mind clicked. Hmm, I wonder. What if this was a guest room, I asked. I think it is, Jasper, Mary replied. I heard a noise from behind me, and I turned. Rose had opened the door and started to leave the room. Mary put the shirt down and I walked towards Rose. Hey, where are you going? I asked her. Mary walked towards us, coming up beside me. Well, I don't think there's anything else to view in here, Jasper, Mary told me. Rose nodded, and I had to agree. This room only had tattered bedsheets, a desk with no drawers, and a closet with old shoes and shirts. I peered out the door, seeing a long hallway with multiple doors. It was dark. Very dark. All right. One second, I told them, placing the backpack on the ground, opening it just to pull out the flashlight. Thank God you grabbed that, Mary said. I pressed the small button on the side, turning it on just for the light to illuminate the hallway. I stepped out. Mary and Rose followed close behind. Mary's POV I could feel the curiosity course through me. The multiple doors seemed to hypnotize me along with the paintings on the wall. I stopped at the first door, causing Jasper to shine the light my way. What are you doing? he asked. I twisted the knob and pushed on the door. It opened, and I smiled with excitement. Oh, she's so into this, I heard Rose mumble. And you both aren't? I asked. I'm interested, Jasper responded. I think it's different, Rose replied. Yeah, exactly. Turn back to the room. Jasper's light shone against the boarded up window and over multiple objects. I heard their footsteps follow me as I went further into the room. Hey, Mary, check this out, I heard Jasper say. 
The light went off of the wall and Jasper had it shining towards a large picture above us. Hey, keep it there, I told him, slowly reaching to take it off of the wall. My fingers grasped the picture's frame, slowly lifting the picture away from the wall. I moved my hand towards the photo, wiping all the dust away to reveal a photo of the building. Oh, it's just a photo on the day of its opening, maybe. Like the one we saw on the website. I told them. Uh, it's something, I guess. I hummed in agreement. The light slowly moved away from the picture as Jasper turned to look around. Uh, this room's so empty, the closet doesn't even have clothes or hangers inside, he said, pointing the light towards the open closet. Well, I shrugged. Maybe we should go upstairs now so we can see the stage or whatever, Jasper asked. Well, I want to check out the rest of the rooms first. Okay, lead the way, leader, Jasper mumbled, holding the light out towards me. I took it in my fingers, making my way out of the room. And just like the last few rooms, there was absolutely nothing. All the rooms were the same. The only things I could find were clothes and the same type of photos. I went out of the last room and started to walk towards the right. Yeah, we saw all the rooms down here, Jasper said. Yeah, well, we can go upstairs now. I moved the flashlight, trying to find the stairs. Wherever the stairs are, Rose added. I continued to walk forward just to see two hallways. One went left, the other went right. I thought for a moment, but I heard Jasper groan loudly. Oh, are you kidding me? He said miserably. Stop being a baby, I said quietly. I heard Rose giggle in response. Jasper mumbled under his breath. I could tell that had made him slightly angry. I'm not a baby. <laughs> Never mind. So, which way do we go? Jasper asked. I shone the flashlight towards the right. The hallway appeared to end with a wall. And old pots were in the corners, sitting there. I shone it towards the left and it seemed to continue on. I slowly started to walk towards the left. The flashlight gripped tight in my hands. I remained silent, hitting the end of the hallway. And there was a door. Only one at the very end. Above the door was a small, slightly damaged sign that read stairs. It was rusty around the hinges. Rose turned the handle and the door refused to open fully. I growled, grabbing the handle just to yank hard, making it open with a loud squeak. The bottom of the door was decayed and broke in a few places from getting dragged across the wooden floor. I shone the light against the wall. In the middle of the room were the stairs. There were no windows, to my surprise. I walked in just to hear something break under my foot. I kept going ahead just to hear the sound more and more. I shone the light on the floor. Small pieces of glass reflected the light back at me. Glass? I asked. Jasper laughed, raising his hands. Oh, spooky, he said in a teasing tone. I rubbed my eyes and started to make my way up the stairs, avoiding the glass shards the best I could. Rose's POV well, I couldn't help but stay close behind Jasper when we continued up the stairs. Each step up felt as if I was going to fall through. Oh, they creaked and creaked until finally we managed to reach the top floor. Mary shone the light towards the door to the next room. Next to it was a large, broken, rectangular tank. At least we know where the glass came from, Mary said quietly, looking over the railing to look straight down. Jasper hummed in agreement. Mary brought her hand up, opening the door just to enter another hallway. The windows had actually allowed some light in. I heard the click of the flashlight, seeing the light that once came out of it vanish. Well, the website wasn't lying when they said it was a huge building. Mary turned off the flashlight. Honestly, I was just happy that I could see again. Mary quickly unzipped Jasper's backpack, shoving the flashlight inside. Well, we don't need this for now, Mary hummed, starting to walk again. Well, my face sort of scrunched up when I walked with them. Oh, this area reeked. Jasper's POV I can imagine in my mind what the area looked like years ago. 
with the multiple civilians walking around in the nice windows. And it was so strange. I mean, what could possibly have made this place close down? What actually happened in this place? I stared at the ground in deep thought as we walked. Jasper, Mary said, nudging me softly. I snapped out of my daze and looked ahead of us. Through a doorway was the stage. I could feel the feelings I craved once again as we walked closer. It was very cool inside of the stage area. All around it, scattered around, were the chairs. The once red colour in the curtains seemed to have vanished into a pinkish colour with splotches of brown. Well, it looks... um, I started. Awesome? Mary finished, and I nodded. Yeah, hey, uh, I'm going to go get a better look, I told her, stepping over a chair which was in front of me. I wanted to see the backstage area. I really, really wanted to. I went towards the steps, lifting my foot up to step on the first one. Roses POV I separated from Jasper and Mary. I didn't want to bother them, so I went across a broken window, trying to get some fresh air at least. The smell of the place didn't seem to bother Mary and Jasper, since they hadn't mentioned anything. The rotting wood just made the whole place smell like decay. Up here was the worst, or at least to me. My eyes travelled down towards the ground below. I inhaled and exhaled, suddenly seeing a shadow of something in the corner of my eye. Oh, shit, I heard, followed by a loud snap. The shadow seemed to move, and I jumped slightly, turning my head to see Jasper. He yanked his foot out of the step, cursing loudly. He had some scratches around his ankle. Mary rushed over towards him and I turned to look again. The shadow was now gone. Jasper, what the hell? Mary shouted. I turned towards them. Oh, sorry. You're so lucky that this didn't hurt you bad, Mary groaned. My heart started to beat faster. Guys, can we leave? I asked, starting to get really worried. Uh, I want to check something out first. I saw another door. Might lead to the backstage. Jasper pointed. But, but... Before I could continue, he climbed on the stage, limping a bit on his foot. It'll be fine, Rose. The pain will go away soon, he assured me, not realizing. Mary rolled her eyes and climbed onto the stage herself. I quickly followed. I just... Well feel safe alone in this area. I knew that Jasper wasn't terribly injured. It would probably be pretty bruised later, though. I moved a piece of the torn and dusty curtain as soon as I climbed up. Jasper had his hand on the handle of a tall door. All right, let's see this and then we leave. Jasper went to turn the handle, just for it to not turn all the way. What? Question, trying again. (sighs) It's locked. Jasper groaned. Oh, then we can go, I said quickly, sliding off of the stage. Yeah, I guess, Jasper mumbled. Oh, I wanted to see the backstage area, but I didn't care. I just felt paranoid now. Jasper's POV slowly closed the door behind us as we left the stage area. My foot throbbed a little and I was slightly upset. I had had my interest built up and now it was torn down. I heard the bag unzip and Mary turned on the flashlight. All right, guess we have nowhere else to go but home. You win, Rose. And Mary sighed. Once again, we started to make our way down into the darkness. It surrounded us in its arms. Rose didn't reply. She was just silent. Rose, sorry if I sounded rude there, Mary apologized. And yet again, she didn't reply. It rose, I shouted. It's okay, she spoke shakily. I knew something was off with her. And once again I heard the glass, and Rose screamed a little in fear. I could hear her dart up the stairs quickly. What was up with her? Rose... 
It's just the glass, remember? I said, worried. I heard her soft sobs, and Mary shone the flashlight towards her. She was curled up against the wall. Hey, stay here for a moment, I told Mary. Duh. Mary frowned. I made my way towards Rose, who looked at me, fear in her eyes. I'm... I'm scared, she said. Hey, there's no reason to be, I assured her, putting my hand on her head. She shook under my touch and sniffled. Now, come on, we're going home. I smiled, holding my hand out towards her. She slowly reached towards my hand and I helped her up. Mary's POV. Jasper gave me a pat, putting on a happy attitude as he returned next to me. Uh, let's go. She's a little better now, he said. I looked down at Rose and exhaled. I'm sorry about this, guys, I said. Yeah, hey, uh, it's okay. Uh, we had a great time. Rose just got a little scared, that's all, he assured me. And I shook my head and he gently grasped my shoulder. Listen, we're okay. Let's go, he said, very serious. And I smiled a bit. All right, I replied we all left, walking out of the area. Jasper's POV As we continued on our way, I made sure to look down at Rose, just to check on her. We're almost there, I told her, the turn coming up. Mary stopped walking for a second, and had this look on her face, a serious one. Hey Mary, um, what are you... Shh! He shushed me. I frowned. Hey, why are you... Shut up and listen, she whispered. I went silent, and Rose came closer to me. And that's when I heard it. A walking sound. Each footstep sounded closer and closer. I felt Rose grip hold of my shirt tight. Mm. I remained silent. My heart started to pound faster the closer it came until a grey, gloved hand grabbed the corner of the wall. You three came to work awfully late. We have to get the show started, said a man's voice in an Italian accent. Mary's POV I felt my mouth go dry. My legs started to get into a running position. Work? Rose asked. We both started to walk backwards towards the door. The man walked slowly into view. He had long white hair which reached down to his upper back. He had makeup on his face and dark rings under his eyes which were bloodshot and had a, a mean feeling to them. What really caught my attention was the small blade which he had grasped in his hand. I am my yes. You are my actor and actresses, of course. You busted in here just to perform. He chuckled, all the time getting closer. Wait, um, hey, I think you've got the wrong group, Jasper said. His hand slowly reached into his pocket so I could see his phone. Rose let out a cry of fear and sprinted away, triggering the male to sprint at us, the dagger in his hand tight. I screamed, dropping the flashlight from fear. <sighs> we need to go, Jasper shouted, turning to run. No way this was happening. My legs went numb. Don't run from your boss, he hissed. I felt a hand grip mine and Jasper sprinted with me into the room with the staircase. Rose quickly backed away from the door. What is wrong with this guy? Jasper asked, shutting the door tight, holding it in place. This is very rude. Open this fucking door, he growled. I could hear the man on the other side ramming it. Jasper put his back against the door, forcing it shut. Get something to help me, Jasper said, his teeth clamped together. He was using all of his strength to keep it closed. I looked around fast, but all I could see was black. I can't see nothing, I shouted. 
Did you drop the flashlight? But I didn't mean to. Then, you are all very late. The male's voice sounded in rage from outside and he started to force the door open from behind Jasper. Jasper's POV. I felt tired. Very tired. This man was going to kill us if I stayed like this. I quickly tried to grab my phone out of my pocket. I felt nothing inside and I gasped. Oh shit, I cursed. What's wrong? I think I dropped my phone. God, are you serious? Jasper. Shut up and run. What? I said, shut up and run. I screamed. I heard Rose quickly sprint up the stairs. She quickly pressed her own back against the door. God, you stupid Mary. I'm not as stupid as you. You can't take this guy. God damn it. I don't want you getting hurt, I shouted, pushing her away. I could hear the glass under her feet, and I thought for a moment. Hey, I have an idea. I can hold it only for a few more seconds, I screamed. Well, if I could just manage to trip him up, it'd work. Jasper, I swear to... I won't see it again. I stopped her right there. I heard her go silent, and then I heard running a deep breath and quickly I moved away from the door he busted in the dagger high I could see the glass under my feet and we both slammed onto the steps I screamed this man was right above me my hands clasped around the dagger holding it away from my heart oh, you ignorant brat I give you one job and this is how you treat me he shouted he was nuts he was really freaking crazy. I no longer wanted the feelings of paranoia and fear. But his eyes were filled with a large amount of insanity. His grin was large and twisted. Get off of me, I shouted, kicking this older man in the ribs. He gripped his chest and tripped on the first four stairs, causing the dagger to get thrown out of the door. He landed directly on the small pieces of glass and screamed in pain, clutching his face quickly tried to get up. Mary had the door held open upstairs. My God, what did you do? Mary asked, shocked. It doesn't matter. Shut the damn door. I ran through it, and Mary slammed the door shut. Quickly ran to grab a chair, putting it against the door. Then I looked around. Yeah, where's Rose? I asked. Mary was breathing quickly. She's behind a curtain she said, walking beside me fast. I looked round at the curtains hanging above the windows. Curled into a ball was Rose. She was crying loudly. My God, I felt terrible. How are we going to escape? Mary asked. I turned to her with anger. It'd be nice if you'd shut up. Damn it, Mary. You just had to come here. This isn't some damn movie or article. This is real life. We have no escape, none. The windows are too freaking high for us to escape from. He's downstairs, which means our exit is blocked, so in other words, we're gonna die. She gasped and her eyes started to water before she pushed me. Jackass, you're the one who wanted to come with. Well, you're the one who found the website. So it's you, you... Will you both shut up? Rose cried, tears running down her face. Mary's angry face suddenly turned into fear, and I snapped out of my angry daze once I heard footsteps. God, he's up, I thought. Mary hissed angrily, walking towards a broken window. I just told you that the windows are too high. I rubbed Rose's back. Well, guess what? Maybe he'll kill you first if I do this. My eyes widened and I bolted up, walking towards her. Mary, just calm it. Don't tell me to calm down, Jasper. I knew that I'd pissed her off. I knew that it was a bad time to do so. Fuck, I'm sorry, I shouted. She shook her head. It's me, me, remember. Remember, Jasper? She shouted, 
going through the window onto the old roof. I looked back at Rose and ran back over, hearing the chair slide away. I shook my head. Oh, screw it, I shouted, picking Rose up. Quickly I scrambled through the window, standing on the grey tiling. A few feet away, Mary sat, glaring at me. Mary, leave me alone. Don't follow me, she growled. Rose gripped hold of me tight and I slowly made my way towards Mary. Well, I knew that I'd screwed up. We all did. I heard the door slam open and we all went stiff. I could hear his angry mumbles and his footsteps throughout the room. Rose started to hiccup from crying. I covered her mouth and my jaw was locked. Mary slowly made her way around the roof, just for her foot to slip, causing her to slide a bit. She screamed in a high pitch, catching his attention from the inside. I felt sweat trickle down my face. Oh, you can't do a disappearing act on me, I heard before a hand wrapped around one of my ankles causing me to fall and drop Rose. Jasper, Rose screamed. I reached my hand out, trying to catch her, just for it to fail. Rose, no, Mary screamed, leaning in to grab her. Sadly, it was too late. I watched in horror as my little sister grasped one piece of siding before her eyes widened. Within one second, the tile snapped. All I could hear was the sound of her body hitting the ground below. And there was nothing but silence. My eyes remained wide and the world seemed to stop. My mouth went agape. My whole body was numb from head to toe. Oh, did you see her? I could have sworn she was levitating. He laughed. My head slowly turned towards him. If I could feel any more fear than this, I would have. He had blood running down his face. His eyes were huge and insane. His nails dug into my hurting ankle, causing me to scream one last time until he yanked me inside, forcing me to the ground. He slowly picked up one of the chairs. All I could do was lay there. I was in a state of shock. Mary's POV My legs were like noodles. Sweat drenched me as I stood, shaking. Rose's body was on the cement below. Her legs were twisted in strange angles, and below her, some blood started to puddle. It was horrible, and now Jasper, I couldn't sit back and do nothing, even if he had pissed me off. I took a deep breath and quickly took off into the room. Right when he was going to slam the chair down, I gripped it, trying to take it away from him. Jasper, run, I shouted. Jasper just laid there, motionless. Let go, you little... He hissed, grabbing me by my hair, yanking me with force. Hit the wooden floor with a loud thump. Everyone gets a little stage fright. Let me help you both, he said, lifting the chair. Felt massive pain in my head. I blacked out. Jasper's POV Tears slowly went down my cheeks as Mary was knocked out cold by the chair. Then he turned slowly. You know what? I think you're very special. I might make you perform with me first. I stared at the chair until it hit me hard in the head. My eyes slowly opened after who knows how long. Everything around me was a blur, unable to be viewed correctly as if it was a fog. A low groan escaped from my mouth. The smell of rot went into my nostrils. I blinked a few times. My vision slowly started to clear, revealing the multiple objects around me. I gasped. All around me were boxes. But it wasn't the boxes that scared me. It was the contents within them all. Human carcasses, each pointed directly my way. Some had maggots slowly eating off of them. I tried to move, but to no success... And I noticed I was inside of something. A box. Suddenly the memories of the events which happened before went deep into my mind, tearing at my brain. But this was all actually happening. My head throbbed. J Jasper! I heard a groan. I tried 
tried to look over the box. It was Mary's voice. Mary, are you... Oh, I hear that you're both awake, a voice said. I started to kick inside of the box. It didn't even budge. Where are you? I shouted. I heard a loud laugh. Mary let out a scream. No, no don't touch me, she shouted. My, my. Don't you want the audience to see you better? He asked. I couldn't even see what they were doing. Mary's POV. I was upright in a box. My eyes followed the man's as he turned me. When he did, human carcasses made me scream. Ah, look at them. They want to see you shine. And he walked towards Jasper, turning the rectangular box towards me. They're dead, Jasper shouted, thrashing around. No, they are not. They are just silently waiting. Now, allow me to introduce myself, he said, walking in front of us, looking at the audience. Hello, my wonderful guests. It is I, Papa Grande de Magico. He announced. My eyes widened. But it all made sense now. He killed people. That's why the place is abandoned. Grande, you're the reason why this place is abandoned? Jasper asked. Grande laughed, clutching his head. No, 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 it's their fault. I performed so greatly. Then they tried to fire me, take away what I love tried to make them proud for years. My boss volunteered himself. He, he, he stuttered before grinning wide. Now, why don't you shut your trap? It's rude to speak when I'm doing my introduction. Jasper flinched and I shook. He cleared his throat and started speaking once again. Now the great Papa Grande has a new actor and actress who come to be right here with me. Uh, this will be a great show. We have two things to show. His eyes snapped towards Jasper. This one will be the first to be shown. He laughed to himself. It's so great to hold your excitement till the end, he continued, talking to the carcasses as if they were living. I felt my heart throb faster and faster as he walked towards this side of the room. There, on the wall was a large hacksaw. It had rust all over it, and when he removed it from the wall, it hit the ground with a ping. I know it's been a long time since I performed for you all. He kept talking as he walked towards Jasper's blind side. So welcome to the show. <laughs> and he laughed, placing the hacksaw in the very middle of the box. Mary, Mary, what is he doing? Shh. It is even worse to speak during the performance, Grande said, starting to soar. I watched as wood shaving slowly fell to the ground as he kept cutting. Let him go, please, oh God, please, I screamed. Jasper's POV. I heard it. I heard that sound. And I finally realized what he was doing. I'm not a part of your magic show, I screamed. He just laughed loudly, starting to soar faster. Mary's begging continued to get louder. You stupid shit. You volunteered yourself, the both of you. Suddenly pain coursed through my body. I could feel the sharp points of the saw rip into my skin like knives. Each movement he made just made it go deeper. Let him go. Let him go, you sicko. This isn't what magic is supposed to be, Mary screamed. One quick movement, I felt my organs get shredded inside of me. And as I screamed, I could feel blood run out of my mouth quickly. The pain, it killed me. And I coughed, some of the blood landing on the wooden flooring that was under me. Grande started to mock my screaming. Hey, I'm a little pussy. A little pussy who can't even do one act. Well... Help, I choked out, breathing becoming near impossible. 
just wanted to die already, just so the pain would go away. Mary's POV. My eyes were swollen from my tears as Jasper struggled to speak. I closed my eyes tight as I suddenly heard a loud crunch, followed by silence. I looked down, keeping them closed as I heard the soaring stop. See, you made it through. It wasn't that bad, right? I heard, hearing something drop to the floor. Now, let's show the actress how you got through it. Now, the audience is so amazed, they are speechless. Grande continued and I heard his footsteps. Come on now, what do you think? Look how he got through it all. He's perfectly fine. I could smell the terrible odor of his breath. My eyes remained closed. Don't be rude towards the actor, he hissed. I felt a stinging sensation on my cheek as his hand made contact and my eyes slowly opened. My stomach turned when I saw him move out of the way, revealing Jasper. The box that Jasper was in was cut in half, just like his body which dropped out his organs as seconds passed. His eyes were bent upwards and his mouth was agape. All my nausea increased and I vomited. Now, the audience is wanting to see the next trick. Ah, this one is my favorite. He went towards a box of swords, walking through the dead body. Oh, don't worry, my crowd. I shall give you my autograph later. He walked back towards me, holding the box of swords in his arms. Images flashed through my mind of my family. What were they going to do? My mom and dad, and the rest of my family, and Jasper's family. They didn't even bother to tell mine where I was going. How will they react when we don't return? I want to see a magic trick. The finale? Grande asked the audience. He went silent for a few seconds then. Ah, that's fantastic, he replied, as if they'd spoken back. He quickly grabbed one sword out of the box. This was my fault. Jasper was right. I'd found the website. I'd wanted to go here. This was all me. Now it begins. I felt pain course through my body, and I threw my head back, crying. He'd slammed a sword directly through my kidney. Ah, you're doing great so far. Now too, Grande said. I could hear a sword bump into another as he picked it out of the bunch. I braced myself for more pain and soon another one had gone through me. This time through my shoulder. Ah, look at this. Perfect. Three. He picked up another. I could just feel the two other swords in me. Blood was drenching my clothes, and I could feel it. Another sword went into me. I could feel it very deep into my side, going towards my lungs. And I was dug deep into the wood, and I released another pain scream. Oh, damn it. It's stuck. Rondé gripped the handle of the sword with two hands, shoving it in with force, going through my ribcage. Ah. <sighs> There we go. Don't worry, the trick is almost finished. Four. And he grinned. I couldn't breathe. The taste of blood entering my mouth. If I was still alive, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Jasper. Rose, I'm so sorry. I said weakly. Finally, the last sword went deep into me, and he twisted it. I could hear Grande chuckle deeply as my life started to fade. He came close to me, whispering in my ear. Welcome to the audience. You can see the others shine now. So yeah, there is another... Weird and wonderful urbex exploration turned bad <laughs> story for you for this wonderful Wednesday evening. Now, it is one of my favourite um, genres because uh, it brings the mundane and the everyday into the realm of horror. Places where, well, kind of like 
uh, liminal spaces, places where we all once felt safe during the daylight and when things were going as they should normally. But as soon as things go dark or time has passed by and everything is abandoned, everything changes and it becomes the place of ultimate evil. So yeah, that's a really interesting story for your Wednesday evening's entertainment. Hope you enjoyed that one. Um, I'm going to be going on holiday for um, a couple of weeks in August, but I'm doing my best to make sure that there's no gap at all in the stories. So I'm recording like crazy at the moment, and um, yeah, should be uh, non-stop stories for your August entertainment. Yeah, if all goes well. Yeah, easy to say that now. No, I've, I've been recording a lot over the last few days, so everything should be going as um, smoothly as always. Thank you for your support for Dr. Creepin's House, my uh, house music DJ and channel. So nice of you all to travel over there, give my support, give your support. So thank you very much. Well, that is enough waffling for this evening. Back again very, very soon. Podcast tomorrow night. Until then, my dear friends, very, very sweet dreams and bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams, and bye-bye.